this is Sean, and today I would like to look at Adobe Media Encoder, and specifically out, how to output your videos, encode your videos, once you have finished creating your project in Premiere Pro. And so as you can see here, I have a simple video um, with just a, a variety of random pictures and some text, as well as some audio. And so, if this were to be my finished project and I was done with this and I was ready to export it, um, I would want to use Adobe Media Encoder to do so. And so, in order to export your video, go ahead and go to File, Export. And as you notice here, there are different options for exporting movie, frame, audio. These are all preset um, encoding uh, settings. And so, it's going to export your video with these specific settings. It's not going to be the highest quality. Um, the size is not going to be... Um, correct and so you're it's gonna have a lot of options that you probably don't want and so uh, I would refrain from using these preset these preset exporting options and instead I would go down to the bottom and click on Adobe Media Encoder when you've done so this screen here will come up and this is your main um, media encoder uh, workplace and this is where you're gonna set all your settings for your exporting of your video um, on the left here you can see you have a screen it both has source and output. It'll show what your source looks like currently. You can go through frame by frame by dragging the slider and looking at the different frames. And it also has the output and what the final product is going to look like. Um, in this case, they're both going to look very similar to the to the input. Um, if you wanted to, you could even crop and only uh, render part of the video file. In my in our case, we're just going to go ahead and render the entire entire thing. And so. On the right side here, you have all of your export settings. These are the settings you're going to change um, depending on how you want your file exported. The first thing we notice at the very top is the format of your video file. It has MPEG-1, MPEG-2s, um, H.264, which is um, MP4 files. Um, and you have Flash Video, QuickTime, Real Media, and Windows Media files. I find it is best to use H.264 because MP4 can be used for so many different file types, where it be your video player, your iPod, your Zune, um, uploading to YouTube, saving to a DVD, uh, Flash Media, whatever you want to use, uh, H.264 or the MP4 file format um, is usually going to be your best bet. So format, I would uh, recommend using H.264. Um, the range you can set to the work areas, you can select a certain amount on your screen and say I only want to encode this much of the video or you can do the entire sequence most often you're probably gonna be rendering the entire project there are also a variety of presets you can use um, whether it be custom settings if you want to change the settings yourself but it also has uh, settings for iPods, iPod videos um, different resolution, HD TVs, um, Google Video, um, NTSC DV, Yahoo Video, YouTube um, all these different things. Um, when you're first starting out, before you've set up um, your basic video settings, um, you usually want to start with the NTSC DV. Um, this is a very common uh, preset, and so uh, it's usually good to start out with this one and then change your video settings um, from there, um, which takes us into the video settings themselves. And um, you always want to try to maintain the same pixels as your source um, for your output. And in my case, the source, as you can see over here, is 1280 by 720. So we're going to want to set ours to 1280. Um, just click it, and you can type in um, 720. And so your final um, uh, frame width and frame height will be exactly the same output as the input is. You can go lower um, if you need it for a certain uh, space, such as a website or something like that. Um, but never go higher. Never try to stretch your video. Um, it'll it'll stretch the pixels and really make it look awful. So try to maintain the same output resolution as the input resolution. Um, you have the frame rates, and 29.97 is usually the norm. You're going to find that frame rate used on most camcorders, most cameras, um, um, unless you set your camera to film at a different frame rate. Usually you're going to end up using 29.97. Field order, field order, you have progressive, upper, and none, and this is simply the... Uh, the field in which it encodes at different different times. Um, progressive, uh, upper and lower, I, I don't notice any difference between them, so I usually just keep it on none, progressive uh, encoding. And then the pixel aspect ratio, you have standard, square pixels, widescreen, and then 2.21 uh, to 1 widescreen, which is very widescreen, which is uh, usually what uh, 
filmmakers will film, and they'll film in this widescreen, and then they'll usually um, scale it back to 16:9, which is going to cut off some of the edges, as you could see over there in the uh, output. And so, in my case, my input video is, or pictures in this case, is 16:9. So we're just going to go ahead and leave the pixel pixel aspect ratio at 16:9. Um, the profile, usually just keep it to main, as well as the level, keep it to 3.1, keep it at the default settings here. The next on the list is the bitrate settings, which are uh, probably the most important settings um, you have uh, besides the um, width and height pixel settings here. And um, what makes these things so important is this is going to determine the quality of your final product, your final video. Um, the first setting you haven't heard of is the bitrate encoding, and you have CBR, one pass and two pass and um, these these vary uh, in different ways the one pass is going to encode your video once it's going to go through it's going to encode a video file and it's going to be saved to your desktop if you or wherever you save it to if you use the second pass it's going to encode it then it's going to go back through it and re-layer another layer of video over the top and this really improves your video quality for VBR two pass so if you're saving your video file to a DVD flash media on your hard drive to use at a later date, you're definitely going to want to use 2Pass. However, if you're um, going to upload to YouTube, as in our case, um, you're always going to want to use VBR 1Pass. And the simple fact is 1Pass is going to take a lot less time to render out. It's going to take a lot less time to upload, as well as it's going to take a lot less time to download when people are trying to watch your videos from the YouTube server. And so if you are going to use this for online digital media, um, always use 1Pass. Um, it just it'll work. It'll work best in the end. It'll be, allow more people to access your video, your files. It'll allow you to do more stuff with them um, in terms of uploading. Next is the bit rate, and this is what directly determines the quality. Lower bit rate, you're obviously going to have a much smaller size, but your quality is going to be uh, greatly affected. As well as a high bit rate, you're going to have a much much larger size file, as you can see by the estimated file size down here. Um, but it's going to it's going to be excellent quality, it's going to be a large file, but you can't always use file sizes that are this long, especially if you're dealing with a 30 minute production, um, that's not going to fit on a DVD. The only uh, reason you would need to use this high of a bitrate would be if you were saving it to your computer for future editing. Um, you, want a high, you want to edit high quality video products so you can edit you know, more details into them. Um, so in that case, if you were using it for that circumstance, you would want a higher bitrate. If you're going to simply upload it to, um, say, YouTube, you're going to want to keep your target bit rate within four and six is usually what I recommend. <clears throat> this quality is going to it's going to keep the quality there, um, but at the same time, it's going to keep your video size small, so you're able to upload it quickly, and people on the other end are able to uh, download it quickly onto their machines as they're watching it. So um, they can watch it faster. You can upload faster. It's going to it's going to be good all around for online video feeds um, for between four and six. If you're going to Put it on a DVD. I'd say between six and eight is a pretty good is a pretty good size measurement um, to fit on the DVD. Obviously, you're just going to want to watch the estimated file size, and for DVD, keep it below the four and a half gigs that can fit on the DVD, or keep it below your eight gigabyte flash drive size, or whatever wherever you're saving it to. Just watch that file size and keep it below what you need to use it from. Um, and so, in our case, we're going to set it to uh, a little bit over four and a little bit over six here on the bit rates. Uh, maximum bit rate is simply telling your computer that never uh, encode this over six uh, six megabytes per second here. And so those are your basic uh, video settings for your file. You also see there's tabs such as filters uh, which you can use for like noise reduction. Um, you have audio settings and what's the only thing important to note in audio settings is you want to try to keep these audio settings here similar or the same to your input audio. If you if it's too different, a uh, media encoder will often never render your audio or partially render your audio, in which case it's going to be messed up and you're going to have to go back through and render it again. So to save yourself some time, just be sure to keep these audio settings similar to your uh, source audio. You have multiplexer settings, and this is basically just the file type which we're using in MP4. If you're using it for an iPod or PSP, you can change the settings here, but we're going to upload to YouTube, so we're going to keep it at standard. And then other, you have FTP server settings, or uh, you can log file details such as errors and warnings. Um, and those are the basic uh, settings within Adobe Media Encoder. 
since we're uploading to YouTube, this these settings seem to work pretty well and look look pretty good uh, for the video we're, we're going to use. So once you've got all your settings in place, it's as simple as clicking OK, um, selecting a place in which you would like to save your file. In this case, I'm just going to save it to um, the libraries, the video library here. And I'm just going to call it um, Media Encoder. And as you see, it's saving as an h264.mp4. And once you've set that and set where you want to save it, you simply click Save. This screen will come up and it will render the file for you. Once you've reached this screen, it's just a matter of waiting for your file to render. And obviously, it's going to take different amount of times to render your file out. Uh, longer video files uh, are obviously going to take more time as well as higher quality ones. And it also depends on the speed of your computer at the same time. And so... This will render out, your file will be saved, and your project will be ready to play or burn to DVD or whatever you want to do with your final project. Um, it's, import it's important to remember that um, I am using Adobe CS3. So CS2 and CS3 uh, use this type of Adobe Media Pro Encoder. If you upgrade to CS4 or CS5, um, you have the ability in those encoders to queue different file types, and so it will render one after another and you won't have to and you're still able to work while it's rendering and so if you have either one of those CS4 or CS5 you're able to do this um, with the previous versions CS3 and CS2 um, it's simply waiting for the file to render and when it's done rendering um, your your file is completed and you can you can use it as you wish so thanks for watching um, this was how to Adobe Media Encoder